don't want to sit here and sound like I'm against green energy. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly in favor of green energy. I think every house in the Nantucket should have a solar panel on the southern side of them. But if we're going to do a large capacity one, I'd rather see the town go into some kind of partnership with a private individual who's going to put his money up on the line because then he's going to vet the numbers. Just like Cape Wind is doing mm -hmm. now. I mean, Cape Wind's numbers didn't even come close to ours. Right. And they're out in the middle of the sound. Mm -hmm. So that was a real red flag for me mm -hmm. where Cape Wind is saying they're not going to get anywhere near this this amount of mm -hmm. capacity, yet we're going to get it, and mm -hmm. we're 15 miles away from them. So, mm -hmm. And we do have obstructions where they have none across the sound. Mm -hmm. so, you know. How's it worked with just four selectmen? Has it worked out okay? It's worked out all right. I'll, I'll be glad when we get a fifth mm -hmm. one back, to be honest. Um, you know, there was a, we, when Whitey passed, it was a very unfortunate and sudden thing. And there, I don't think there's anyone on that board that thought that we would go till April mm. with a four member board. Um, there were a lot of issues that came up. We had the presidential race, we had the primaries. Catherine couldn't get a date to do the, the uh, selectman race mm -hmm. until literally it would have been whoever got elected would have had to rerun in six weeks mm -hmm. and to us it just didn't make sense plus the cost for the town to run a special election had it been had there not been a presidential mm -hmm. election we could have elected a selectman back in september and then we we would mm -hmm. have had a five-member board so you know we took a little heat on it but mm -hmm. i think it's it's worked out you haven't had any you've had we, a we couple of times issues. i guess yeah. where you this week with school vacation mm -hmm. we're not going to have a meeting because we won't have a quorum mm -hmm. um but you know, that's really been it. So it, it's not that big of a deal to me. I mean, I'm sure it is to some people in the community. You know, um, it would take a charter change mm. to fix it. And I think Catherine Stover has put a couple of articles mm. in for that. But to me, it, you know, I always thought that um, the simplest way would be if if there was an unforeseen incident where you lost a selectman, I mean, you could go mm. back to the last election and take the person with the next number of votes. You know, that if and that might be a simple charter change to do mm. that. But... You know, uh, there are a lot of towns that only work with three selectmen, so it, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. We um, we haven't any two two ties, so that's the biggest concern right. with an even number right. board. But you know, it's uh, it's worked so far, and and within very soon we'll have a new selectman. So. What do you think of this? Of the fact that there are what seven people in the race? Is there up to year? seven now? Up, yeah, it's pretty close to seven. Yeah. Six or seven have they people? all turned in their papers? Oh, that's the question. according to what I read in the paper, they have. Well, um, that ought to be interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, well, uh, what I find fascinating is the fact that that many people run for selectmen, and yet many of the other boards and commissions are, you know, it's hard to fill them. I have concerns with people who run for selectmen mm -hmm. just to get their 10 minutes mm -hmm. of in the sun, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know, um, I thought about it for quite a few years before I decided to run. And the year before I ran, I went to almost every FinCom mm -hmm. meeting. I think I only missed two or three. Mm -hmm. So I understood what was coming up. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, whoever gets elected, that you just can't go into a Wednesday night meeting and open up your packet and expect to know what's going on. Right. You know, We get our packets from America every Friday, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of times when almost every week where Monday and Tuesday for me is spent getting more information because there's something there that I don't understand or I, want, I have more questions about. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I hope mm -hmm. whoever gets elected goes into it with that kind of attitude because this job, the Wednesday night meetings are the easy part. Mm -hmm. They really are. Um, it's a, it's a probably on average a 20 to 25 hour a week commitment between the reading and the research and the phone calls and the subcommittee mm -hmm. meetings that you have to do. So mm -hmm. you have to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how it, yeah. how it plays it's out. It's always good you know, to get yeah. some new blood in. It is. You know? um, but it would be nice if some of them put some time in on other <laughs> boards and commissions yeah, before yes. they got there. Um, you know, I think we have a good yeah. thing come now. I think we have a great airport commission, mm -hmm. thanks to yourself and yeah. a few others. Thank you know, you. Um, I was fortunate that I came in on the end of that, mm -hmm. so uh, I had a little deniability as to what had happened in the past. But, you know, there's a perfect example of... Um, I think one of the hardest things that the Board of Selectmen does mm -hmm. is appointing commissioners to these commissions that a lot of times it's very difficult to not vote for someone that you know well mm -hmm. and vote for someone that you think is better qualified. But it's also very important mm -hmm. that you vet each candidate, each candidate and really get someone on these commissions who can add to the commission and not, and not just 
be a, a, a another uh, person of the same type mm -hmm. that's there. It's good right. to get a diversity in these it commissions. Is. It's very important to right. have diversity and the contributions, for example, in the airport commission by the different people who have a lot, very different right. backgrounds, very different right. agenda, agenda is uh, but they all make a make a contribution and they I think that's where the Board of Selectmen yeah. is right yeah. now we have the four members mm -hmm. that are there all represent different mm -hmm. different parts mm -hmm. of the community mm -hmm. you know um, for me I, I'm the kind of the waterfront guy mm -hmm. which we haven't had in quite a few years but it's an important part of our economy um, and I think it's a part that needs to be represented there so I, mean, I guess one of the concerns that I've had is we came up with a plan for Wilkes Square um, it's not apparent to the public that anything happened with that other than it's being put on the put on the shelf, so to speak. Well, and I, I recognize that there are issues of you know land ownership and all sorts of other things that come to play here. But I think it'd be interesting to hear your perspective on on what the town could do at this point to push something like that forward, whether it's that plan or another plan that deals with parking issues, deals with... Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the Wilkes Square plan when it was first developed, I, I was not a strong mm. opponent, I mean, proponent, proponent for yeah. it. Um, I thought it was kind of a waste mm. of town's money. The plan is very good. The problem, as you said, is that 90% of the land we don't own, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to get private landowners to do what you want. Now, there are some things that we can do for them. Um, we can change some zoning mm -hmm. to work better for them. We can uh, move roads around. We can do things of that nature. You know, the person that would really have a better idea or could give you better answers to this is Andrew because it's really, it's really mm -hmm. more of a planning thing than it is a board of selectmen thing. I've seen the plans. I'm sure you've seen the plans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it would be great if that could happen. You know, Remain has their properties as part of that plan, and they're they're very willing to work mm -hmm. with the town. And we could end up with a a uh, state, you know, fabulous facility. fabulous facility with ample parking, mm -hmm. a transportation center. The taxis could go and come mm -hmm. from there. The buses can go and come from there. Um, you know, the the Washington Street Park plot lot. I think you know, we could reconfigure it to put a few more cars in there. Mm. That's actually being looked at now. You know, the other problem you have with the Wash Street lot is that we have neighbors around that don't want anything to change, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, the, you know, we tried for the last two years since I've been on the board to enter into a short-term lease with National Grid to use that space for a paid valet service where you just pull up Mm -hmm. Drop your car off. Give the right. guy the he give you a ticket. Take your car and park it. You come back and get it. If we could ever get them to agree to that, that would alleviate a huge amount of the parking issues in town. Um, and I thought we were very close last year. You know, uh, that was uh, something that Bruce mm -hmm. came on board and mm -hmm. he really he really took the lead on that and he worked very hard on it. And we got to the ninth hour and at the last minute National Grid said no. We're going to try again this year. You know, we're going to keep pushing mm -hmm. it. I think they're afraid that once they set the precedent that it's parking they can't do anything else with it um, but there's a there's so many issues down there you know it's a lot of it's considered wetland mm -hmm. it's within 100 feet of a coastal shore um, somebody just, said to me if you dig down six feet you smell whale oil you, you don't smell things. whale oil but um, that's part of the reason yeah. why it hasn't been developed right. so far is because there are contaminants there still from when we go back to the to the mm -hmm. coal gasification mm -hmm. plant mm -hmm. um, you know that if you look on that property the electric company building, the, br the big brick building where the transformers are. Behind that, there's a small black building with a big fiberglass, uh, looks like an upweller box mm -hmm. out there. That is actually um, a scrubber. And there are wells all through that property where they pump the water out of the ground, they run it through that building and pump it back in. Mm -hmm. And they test it mm -hmm. constantly. And it's getting cleaner and cleaner. <clears throat> Excuse me. And soon, sometime in the near future, it's going to be considered clean by the DEP. And at, at that point, then that land is developable. Mm -hmm. And it's a, you know, it's a very, very valuable piece of property. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I, I, hopefully we can put some pressure on them to, um, to at least look at the plan and maybe put parts of it in place. It would be great if the whole thing were done. There are, I think, three different scenarios. You know, um, and I, any one of the three, I think, would be a huge improvement. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. What about the tank farm? Tank farm's going. You know, we're in the process of dealing with that mm -hmm. now um, we have money 
that was uh, allocated at town meeting years back to start the process. Mm -hmm. We're going to go. Uh, we've had several meetings the last few months about that, the, the mm -hmm. tank farm uh, committee. And we're going to have um, a consultant come in and figure out exactly what size tank farm we need because that's, I think, it's an important part before we just go and put an RFP out mm -hmm. or an RFQ for a chunk of the industrial land out at the airport. Mm -hmm. We need to know how much do we need, how many tanks are we going to need, what size, right. you know, that kind of thing. So we'll get a consultant mm -hmm. in to give us that, and then we'll, we'll cut off a piece of the land down um, in the industrial mm -hmm. park, and we'll put it out to a uh, bid. Whether we lease it or sell it, we're not sure yet. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously we'll have to go to town meeting and get right. their approval, but you know that tank farm needs to go out of town, and the reality is with the way things are shipped now, it's not like we're getting barges every week. They can do it all with mm -hmm. trailer trucks. The freight boat can amply carry it. We, you know, the um, that was one of the things that came out of the ethanol and the and the gasoline mm -hmm. is where they can no longer put in in tankers. Mm -hmm. We all the gasoline that comes in Nantucket now comes on mm -hmm. by truck. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why we can't do the same thing mm -hmm. with heating oil. And a lot of the islands changed over to propane. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like the old days when 90% of the houses were or home heating oil. It's probably more like 50-50 mm -hmm. or maybe even more gas than mm -hmm. oil. So you know, that it can all be worked mm -hmm. out. Um, two other things I want to ask you about. One is, uh, go back to the finances for a minute. You know, Nantucket has financed a lot of its growth on the growth in the real estate market mm -hmm. in the last 20 years, 15 years. That's gonna, that's, that opportunity for growth is diminishing as the um, available land for new building uh, is used up. How is, how is Nantucket going to absorb the impact of not having that extra revenue, if you will? Um, it's going to be tough. I mean, especially, especially with, these, with the capital these, things. Right, you know. These big price tags mm -hmm. coming out there. You know, one of the things is how are we going to pay for this sewer infrastructure mm -hmm. if if it's going to be a hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. which I believe it will. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're we're fortunate in Nantucket, believe it or not, that we only have we're looking at a hundred million dollar price tag. Mm -hmm. The town of Falmouth is looking at four hundred and fifty million. You know, we were mm -hmm. fortunate that a hundred and something years ago, the founding fathers in Nantucket put sewer, sewer, to put to sewer in, yeah. and no one else did. Mm -hmm. Most of the Cape Towns have no sewer. And Chatham's doing it now, right? Chatham's doing it now, but you've got, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a Cape-wide problem, mm -hmm. and, and there is lawsuits pending in federal court by the Pew Foundation and uh, the Oceans Institute to force these towns mm -hmm. to do it. And the, all that's going to happen is the state and the federal government's going to come in and say, these are unfunded mandates, mm -hmm. which means it's up to you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I have an idea how to fund the sewer. You know, right now it's set up as a third, a third, and a third. Right. And that really Has isn't work. working. Yeah. You know, and it's caused uh, heavy rates for the uh, users of the sewer systems. Um, what I thought was one of the reasons that we have to build all these treatment plants and sewer matic is because we have more people here more months out of the year mm -hmm. and houses are used more. And uh, you remember a couple years back, we had two years in a row, we had a, a rental tax uh, article come for right. weekly rentals and uh, homes. I was uh, strictly against it at the time. I just didn't want that money to go into the general fund and mm. just disappear. I would support that tax if it was earmarked for water, water quality, for sewers, for storm drains, for things of that nature. Because this is really why we have to have all these treatment plants, why we're going to have to sewer it, because these houses are being mm -hmm. used longer and heavier. So why not tax the user and then put that money towards paying for mm -hmm. the debt on these, on these expansions? Interesting that you say that about Manicot, because we moved there full time in 2012. In mm -hmm. 2012, we went to dinner and uh, some friends out in Starbuck Road, and I counted the number of houses with lights on. I did the same thing about a month ago. There were fewer. Yeah. Now, right. than there were 12, 13 but years ago. The difference is. But, but let me also just say, a lot of people have fixed their septic systems. Not right. everybody, but right. a lot of people. They put in tight tanks right. or you know the right. next generation systems. Right. And the testing on which the the need for a some kind of uh, sewer system in Madikett was done about eight or nine years ago. Right. Um, is it worth 
doing that again before we make well, the final decision? Well, that's part of the CWMP yeah. is to update it because, yeah. as you said, it was done later, and we haven't we haven't decided to do anything mm -hmm. yet. Right. Personally, I believe that we're going to have to sue our part of Madigan. Mm -hmm. Not all of it. Mm -hmm. Not like where they were originally talking. Right. Um, the map is broken into five areas. Mm -hmm. You live in Area 5, which right. is Fisher's Landing. There's no mm -hmm. need to sewer mm -hmm. Fisher's Landing. I think Area 1, which is the critical water around the creek. And the reason I say that is all you have to do is look at the creek and know that we have an mm -hmm. issue out there. And when I was a kid, when I was 18, 20 mm -hmm. years old, you drove over that bridge at Millie's Bridge and the grass, the eelgrass, came right to the surface. Right. There's not a blade of eelgrass in that creek mm. anymore. And it's starting now to die as it goes out of the creek. Mm. Um, but also, all those houses along the creek and from Madigan Road over and Smith's Point, those houses were weekend houses. Most of them were owned by Nantucketers mm. Mm. who had a house in town and went out to Madigan right. on the weekend. Right. They weren't lived in, mm -hmm. they weren't used eight, nine, ten months a year. Mm -hmm. You know, those houses are full every mm. day in the summertime and those septic systems are flushing. And yes, they are Title V systems, mm. but they still get nitrogen in the system. Mm. No, unless you go to a tank, mm. a tight tank, which the state really will only give you as a last resort. I mean, I have a house that, um, I do work on in the end of Smith's Point that is a perfect example of what should be built out there. It is the two bathrooms in the house have composting toilets, so nothing comes mm -hmm. out of the toilets. The only water that goes in the septic system is the gray water from showers and dishes. Mm -hmm. So as long as you use phosphate free soaps, mm -hmm. you're good. You know, you're getting right. basically just water into mm -hmm. the ground. Um, so, you know, uh, what, one of the things that I was concerned with was that. You know, there was a mandate for years to make everybody update their systems in Madikett. That that has sort of been um, not put on hold. Put on hold, exactly, yeah. because every time somebody spends fifty thousand dollars on a system, the last thing they want to be told is three years from now you've got to hook into the sewer. Um, I think that we'll probably have to sewer a portion of Madikett. Do I think we need to go and build a thirty million treatment plant? No, I'm hoping that we can maybe pipe it or somehow do it, like sort of like sconce it. Um, but we're going to have to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, and the same thing with the harbor. We may have to sewer Monomoy and Shimo to get the TMDLs down. One of the things that came out of the, the, the last uh, CMAS test was that if we raise the height of the jetties, it'll drastically drop the, the TMDLs in, in the uh, west end of the harbor. Mm -hmm. That should have been done 10 years ago anyway, just as a safety issue. Right. You know, boats constantly are going up on those rocks. Mm -hmm. People have died on those rocks. You know, so right now the town is um, aggressively um, going to the Army Corps and through our senators and congressmen to get that on the agenda. But, you know, it's just it's a matter of prioritizing. The, the federal government could spend seven million or five million dollars, whatever they spent, to look for a few unexploded training mines that mm -hmm. were buried 20 feet in the ground in Tom Nevers. Right. But they couldn't spend three million dollars to fix the jetties, mm -hmm. which is the lifeline to Nantucket. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't get it sometimes, you know. But, right. You know. What about the taxis? Let's talk about the taxis. Uh, the taxis. It's, not, it's an issue that's still pending. Yeah, but it's going very well. Um, you know, the meters were voted in, mm -hmm. so we're going to have meters. Um, we've had two meetings of the, uh, the taxi rate work group. Mm -hmm. uh, we're moving along very well. We have another one on Friday. I'm hoping at the end of the Friday's meeting, we'll either have a, cons a consensus with the group to send some send the proposed rates to the selectmen, or we may have to have a few more mm -hmm. meetings. I've told the work group and the taxi community that I don't care how many meetings it takes, we're not going to take the selectmen until we're all mm -hmm. in a general agreement as to what we have. Um, you know, I think it was, that's probably one of those things that... Uh, the, the public had pretty much just said that I'd made my mind up on. Mm -hmm. I, I went into the meeting, the public hearing, 90% sure that, we were, that I wanted meters mm -hmm. in the cab. I didn't hear an argument about anything. Nothing told me otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, no one's going to be happy about it in the taxi community. It's a change. Nobody likes change. But I get so many complaints over the course of the summer mm -hmm. from people that live here, mm -hmm. from people that vacation mm -hmm. here. And this will be, it'll bring consistency to it. So 
you know um, it I is think. it is interesting because people just will not come forward you know I came right. to that meeting right. when you were talking about it right. and uh, I wasn't gonna I wasn't there to say anything right. but when nobody said anything right. I thought it had to be said yeah. and you know and, and I tried to explain that to the taxi yeah. drivers I said you know you're saying well where are the complaints there's only four complaints yeah. logged in the police mm -hmm. station in three months so yeah they don't complain because they don't think they're going to get anywhere with it but they complain to us they complain to the selectmen mm -hmm. they complain to their friends they complain to the inn owners mm -hmm. and the restaurant owners mm -hmm. and whoever else you know and um nobody likes regulations believe me i i deal with this all the time with my charter business and the fishery stuff i mean every time i turn around the federal government's mandated and then i do something else I don't even get a say in it, and that's what I said to the selectmen. I mean, to the taxi drivers, said at least you guys are getting a chance to have input into this. Mm -hmm. You know, I just get a letter in the mail saying I have to do this now, mm -hmm. or I can't fish anymore. Right. You know, so I, I, you know, I think it's going to be an, a little difficult this year. I'm sure there's going to be some upset people, mm -hmm. but it, with it, it'll get better, like everything else does. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll use the airport as an example. When mm -hmm. you went in there, it mm -hmm. was a firestorm. It's getting mm -hmm. much better now, and in another year or two, it should be all, have itself all worked out. So I hope so. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Bob, thanks. I'd love to spend some time talking with you about fishing sometime. Yeah, I think that's can... a subject for another day. <laughs> exactly. So, but thank you very much. No problem, Dan. Great.